everybody. I'm Kelly Hogan, and I have my friend Adrian Gledhill with me today. Adrian, I want to go back in time for a minute to talk about the year 2004, which was somehow 20 years ago. Seems more like it should be like 10 years ago, but it was 20, 20 years ago. That was the year when the show Biggest Loser first came on television, and I started off that year watching the show, watching the trainers yell at the people on the show, and I was thinking... Well, I was torn between two things. Number one, oh my gosh, I need to be there. If I were just there, I know I could lose this weight because I was at my heaviest, 260 plus pounds in 2004. And I wanted to be with these people so I could also be yelled at and learn how to lose weight. And I was also torn between, oh my gosh, I would be so hungry and I could not exercise that much. <laughs> it looked awful. But Adrian... That was the same year that fall when I went to my doctor, Dr. D Benjamin Dunlap, and he told me, you're inflamed and it's from carbohydrates. I want you to eat only meat. That was the year. 2004 was big. So the reason I bring this up, you also, I assume, had watched the show The Biggest Loser at some point. And in season three, you ended up being part of that. How did that happen? Well, I had been overweight my whole life. And in high school, I think, I think you had said similarly that I was really active and that kind of kept some of the weight off. But then when I went to college, I gained like 60 pounds and I tried, um, the Atkins diet. I tried, uh, a beach diet. I tried all these things. I just could not keep this weight off. And I saw the show and I thought, gosh, I could be, I could finally, I could finally not be overweight. And I had a dream and God said, you're going to be on The Biggest Loser. And I was like, no. But I sent in a video and I went to an open casting call and then I got a strange email that I had I had gotten picked for this. I assume that while you're there, they tell you exactly what to eat and they feed you and you work out all day with the trainers and that it was probably hard, but kind of effective. People lost weight. It seemed like really quickly. How did that compare to your real life experience there? It is not as it seems. The trainers were really only there when the cameras were there. It was very independent. People were really doing what everybody else is doing, except to a very extreme level because you had all this pressure on your shoulders. And so people were working out hard all day long as much as they could. They were reducing as many calories as they could. We were really told to eat everything in moderation, but at a smaller portion, just like everybody is trying to do these days. And there wasn't a nutritionist there. There wasn't a psychologist there. There wasn't a doctor there. They were really on their own, basically unhealthily doing the same things that all of us at home are doing, except, um, you know, at a turbo level, because that was your full-time job. One thing I really want to say is we, I was watching the show recently and I saw people losing 10, 20, 30 pounds in a week. And I, I really want to debunk this. That was not a week. It was two, three, four, maybe more weeks of filming. And then on top of that, people knew how to play with water weight. So there is no magic pill. There's no magic diet. Those actors that our trainers, they don't have magic tricks. It's the same stuff you're doing at home. And they were losing maybe two to three pounds a week because they were doing it full time, but it looked different. And so there, there is no magic. I think that's important for people to hear. So you did get to go there. And how much weight did you lose while you were part of that show? I got down to 161. And this is kind of a important number for later on, because in high school, I was also in the 160s. And later when I had other attempts, I get in the 160s. It's like a stuck point for me. But so I got down there and then I immediately started going back up. Like as soon as you came back home, it was just. Mm -hmm. I heard that that's common for people who went on the show. You know, it's such a, it's such a burnout on your hormones to be losing weight like that, that fast with that much restriction and that much running. 
um, you're really burning your hormones and your metabolism out. And for a long time, I thought I was all alone. I hid, I had shame. I was like, I'm a failure. I, I am the shame of the United States. And I hid and I was so sad and I was so negative to myself. And then it turned out, I think pretty much everybody gained their weight back. And I couldn't say that confidently until recently when I learned about hormones and metabolism, that it wouldn't make sense for you to keep the weight off because we burned our hormones out and so many people were injured and it's not sustainable. And another thing people don't realize is we left the show and they gave us no post show. There was no education on reverse dieting. There was no education on any of that. You were just like back out there with no help. And so I, you know, we're, we have a community and I've seen most people did gain their weight back. There is a, like a community of we were on Biggest Losers together kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, it's so an alumni group. Oh, an alumni group. And you've kept in touch. So, you know, a lot of these people did go through struggles. All right. Yeah. So you went through the show and you did lose weight. And I've heard you say for about five minutes, <laughs> which I do relate to. I've had diets that would work because I do. I used to do very unsustainable things, not like mm -hmm. Jillian Michaels, not like Jillian screaming at me unsustainable, but about that bad, right? Rice cakes and running that nobody could possibly keep up forever. And then I would gain it right back too. So that's what happened. And then what other solutions have you tried even since then? So when I got pregnant with my second child, I ended up with preeclampsia. So about five minutes after I left the show, I was back in the 170s. Okay. Within a few months, I was back in the 200s. And then I spent most of my 20s in the 260s. And I just hid. And the thing is, I know that so many out there can feel the same way. You lose weight. You tell everyone. You're like, look at me. And, you know, back in the day, it was I did this on TV. But these days, we're doing this on social media. So I know you guys know what I mean when you gain that weight back. And you just feel so terrible, like... Like I, I just, I sting. And, um, so I ended up most of my twenties in the two sixties, got pregnant, end up with preeclampsia, get up to 330 pounds. Oh. And that's when I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And so I started running and restricting again. And I got down to 220. Then I started going back up again. And then I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And so I reached out to some of my fellow biggest losers. I said, how are you losing this and keeping this off? And they said, bariatric surgery. Wow. So I Googled, I researched, I'm all type A and I'm like, and it said, this is the number one way to lose all your weight and keep it off for good. This surgeon can fix your body. You can be fixed because you are broken. Yeah. And so I got the surgery and I still struggled to lose weight. And I would go in and I would be like, listen, I am running half marathons. I am eating 900 to 1200 calories. I am losing one pound every six weeks. What is going on? And they were like, you forgot to track your ice cream. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't eat ice cream. I didn't. I'm running and I'm doing what you said and it's not falling off. And then the hypoglycemia kicked in. And this is one of my whys that makes me cry because I would have hypoglycemia all the time. And this is when I started reducing what is in my diet too, to try to get rid of this. So I'm not eating sugar. I'm not eating grains. I am um, still having hypoglycemia. I'm taking my kids to the grocery store. My blood sugar is dropping. I'm throwing a birthday party. My blood sugar is dropping. It was like stress induced and potentially food induced, except all I was eating was chicken and vegetables. This went on for like 10 years of the hypoglycemia and struggling to keep the weight off, even with the surgery. So I have kid number three, Kid number four, there's also some infertility issues in there. And I even lost a baby at 20 weeks and I'm being told this just happens. I'm going to the doctor, struggling with this weight. I start having incredible fatigue. I start having brain fog. My skin is itchy. I'm not sleeping. Um, I have baby, none of my babies I had any milk with. And I kept being told, you know, I didn't try hard enough. I didn't have the right magical supplements. I did something wrong. So my fourth one, I birthed at home in my bathtub. 
I stayed home for six weeks. I had all my food pre-made. I had all the magical supplements. And so this time I switched from kind of a standard doctor to a functional doctor. And she ran a few blood tests and was like, honey, your adrenals are suffering to a dysfunctional level. That's the top level. Your thyroid is, is struggling. Your um, antibodies are through the roof. You have all kinds, you look fine on the outside, but on the inside, your body is struggling and needs some healing. And that's when my dad had gone, no car, no grain, no sugar with Vinny. And he said, listen, honey, because I listen to my dad, all these people are healing autoimmune by eating meat and you need to cut the veggies. And I was like, what? I was told my whole life to have this much veggie and this much meat and also to include some grains and reduce your fat and that's crazy. Are you sure? So in November of 2022, I started reducing my veggies and January 17th, 2023, I'm like, I'm officially carnivore. And let me tell you, I immediately, I started out at 202. I immediately started, the inflammation came down. I started sleeping better. My skin stopped itching. Um, my hypoglycemia has completely disappeared. No more hypoglycemia. And that is the best part right there. Who cares even if I weigh 202, if I can't take my children to the grocery store to get food. Um, So many things have improved health-wise. My energy is better. Um, my, My body isn't as sore. And so, so many things have improved since just switching to meat. Oh, my favorite one is 10 years ago, I realized, listen, I do not have control over alcohol. Alcohol is really, it's, I just feel like a slave to it. I'm very addicted to it. And I knew growing up with an alcoholic in our home, I did not want that around my kids. So I quit drinking 10 years ago. And I was always thinking to myself, I wish I could have the same sobriety with food. Yes. Like, how could you do that though? Cause you, you have to eat. And when I switched to meat, it was like this huge weight off of my shoulders. Like the cravings went down, the munching went down. I felt satisfied. Um, it, it was like this, like being food sober for the first time in my life. And that too is just such a victory right there. Oh, that freedom to me, I've said the same thing. Even if I hadn't lost weight, it's like chains being released where you mm-hmm. just feel like you can be you and not think about food nonstop. I'm so proud of you and happy for you, Adrian. Amazing. When people tell me from now on, I've quote, tried everything. No, girl, you've literally tried everything, including the show Biggest Loser and bypass and all of the different programs and points I'm sure and potion yeah yeah you've been there and And I I was to the point where I just thought this is just it yeah I am going to be overweight my whole life and it's my fault like the society has so much guilt and shame and they have like no compassion for the fact that your body, if you are obese or overweight, your body isn't processing your energy properly. I know people who are a size zero, like literally, I know these people, a size zero, and they eat 6,000 calories a day. And then I know me who has this surgery, I'm running half marathons, I'm eating 900 calories, and I'm trying not to gain 10 pounds overnight. Yeah. And so I wish that there was more compassion for what's happening inside of our bodies. And that's like the number one thing I learned here is number one, we can't train ourselves to not like to not be satisfied. Like you can't train yourself to be malnourished. You can't train yourself to, to not be satisfied. You, you need to be satiated and nourished and have some love. And then number two is just that all the healing that can happen that, like, I love how you're posting your food and stuff and showing like we can heal our metabolisms. One of the things people are saying about the biggest loser is that it killed our metabolism permanently. That's what they're saying. And it, and it's like, well, that's probably because you haven't found the healing diet yet. You haven't found your beef, butter, bacon, eggs, and fish. Yes. Um, and I'm guessing and- if you had stuck on that road of just eat less, 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 and more of a standard dieting approach, they're probably right. You would have permanently, you couldn't come back from that. What do you, how much, 
how much less can a person eat, right? There's there's a limit yeah. to that. Yeah. But you found the workaround, the ultimate workaround. I wish people knew because I think so many people have it in their mind. They've seen, oh, wow, they lost 15 pounds in a week. So if I just run like an ultra marathoner and eat like a toddler, I will be successful. But because I can't do that, I am a loser. And that's just, that's not real. That's so bad for your hormones. And it's just, that's not sustainable for anybody. No. Yeah. I remember when I was in my early twenties, I would go out, I would get really convicted about my body in the evenings for some reason. Like that's, that's when it would hit me every day. Oh my gosh, you've got to do something about this. Right. And I would mm -hmm. go out and run and run and run and eat all of the fat free, everything fat free, mm -hmm. everything. And it felt like such a, like even a moral failure on my part. And when I watched, I just watched an episode the other day of biggest loser. It was an old episode. The way these poor people were being spoken to made it feel like they are less than degrading. Yes. Why can't you be as good as us, these trainers? These, I th that's heartbreaking. Yes. I'm here to save you. Oh, yeah. right. Yes, here they we are. literally say, I'm here to save you from yourself. Yeah. And the truth is, I don't think that we have a people problem. I think we have a food problem. Yeah. I think that our food is making people sick. Yeah. I wasn't a glutton before. I wasn't a sloth before. I didn't have a, a lack of running problem before. I had a food problem before. I was being told to eat the wrong foods. And that's where yeah. a lot of people are still living today. They're doing a lot of what they're being told and it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. So hearing you say it, like you went to the experts, you did it their way. It doesn't work. I think that's really powerful. Another wow. thing that doesn't work for me yeah. is, and I was watching the show and they were like, you need to kill yourself in the gym. If you're not doing this, then you didn't try hard enough. And that's not true. Like when I I've done half marathons, I've run, run, run. And I do, I did lots of hit classes and it was not only was it killing my hormones, it was um, causing me a ton of inflammation. Right. So now I walk, I mean, this is a girl I've run a whole marathon and I don't run it all anymore. I, sometimes I like to sprint a little bit. It just feels good, but Mostly I walk and it just, it feels so good. Honestly, it's going to sound crazy, but sometimes I like to walk in the morning and the afternoon. It just feels good. And I picture like they say, walking helps your lymph nodes. It helps you detox. It helps your hormones flow. It helps your nervous system. And then I love even more to walk outside and breathe that fresh air and get that sun. And it's so medicinal and so I've been getting my kids too. We all, I make them all do it. My kids and I, we walk, we have a spot we call the meadow. We walk to the meadow and back. We sled at the meadow, even when there's no snow. We just sled down. It's a big grassy hill. And I'm with you. It's therapy. It's medicine. Mental, physical. I think it makes everything better. Digestion, improve mm -hmm. the walking. Everything is better. Awesome. Yeah. And I stopped with the hit classes too. And now I just, I have like a list of three or four things that I'm going to do reps of, and I just slowly do it and, and you can kind of feel the burn and I like it slow. What I hated about the classes was lift, 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 and hop on one circle while you're doing it. And then we're going to move to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, and you can't breathe in between and you're going to get injured. <laughs> like I feel so much better. And honestly, I just saw my best friend this weekend and she was a D1 runner and I showed her my arms and she was like, whoa, what happened? And I showed her my legs too. And just this slower um, at my own pace lifting has been so much more successful for me. So we don't, we don't have to kill ourselves in the gym at all. In fact, that's just going to cause inflammation and injury. The episode I watched the other day of Biggest Loser that Jillian was literally yelling at this poor man and he was such a just a big teddy bear that if you haven't worked until you puke you have left something on the table you haven't worked hard enough and he did he worked that day until he had to go outside and vomit I thought 
Oh my gosh, that's not the message. That's not it. I just cringe when I watch it. I cringe. But I do want to tell you a couple of secrets on that if you have a second. Yeah. Um, one was our gym was actually a tent that was painted like a building. And then it was in the middle of the desert in the summer. And when we were filming, they had to turn all the fans off because it messed with the microphones. So that's why you see these people puking and because we were literally working out in a sauna. And then uh, they really, the workout wasn't that long. It was just filmed that it looked that long. And you would think, well, all these people are sweating like crazy. Um, yeah, because we were in a sauna. A tent in the desert. The desert. Oh my gosh, without a fan. Yeah, well, that explains the sweat. It's a <laughs> I heard that Caroline Ray, she quit because she saw the inhumane conditions and said, this oh. is, you know, I mean, people were being left there. Another thing is, um, the mental load. First of all, when you're losing weight, you should have some compassion for yourself because you're extinguishing those fat cells and that's ex that's releasing hormones into your blood. And so it's already so, so tough hormonally. Yeah. And then secondly, when you have a camera in your face 24 seven and you feel like if I sleep, someone else is on a treadmill somewhere working and I'm going to lose and I'm going to lose my dream. It wasn't about the 250,000. It was about this dream that I could finally not be the biggest person in the room. I could finally, and like, I thought those same things they were saying, I thought I was less than because I've been overweight my whole life. So I could finally not be less than if I could just outrun everybody here. Um, and that, that pressure cooker, and it went on for so long that, I mean, people who stayed at the end, they may have been filmed for maybe 20, 25 weeks. Oh um, my friend, gosh. You know, when you watch Survivor, that's 39 days. Yeah. That, you know, Big Brother is a is a, a little bit longer than that. But to be but to be filmed for three, four, five, six months, I mean it's and you don't get to talk to your family and you're sequestered and to play this game for that long is mentally just exhausting. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is eating nothing but meat to satiety. <laughs> It's turned out to be better than that. <laughs> Is yes. that what I hear? Yes. Yes. Oh. And I, I just, if we could just find one person, Kelly, and them get to know, hey, I don't have to kill myself in the gym and I don't have to starve myself and I don't have to take any shots and I don't need a doctor to alter my body. Yeah. I can just eat meat and be full and be nourished because another wonderful thing that happened was I have been filled with anxiety like my whole life mm -hmm. I tried to pray it out I tried to therapy it out I tried to sleep it out I tried to meditate it out it didn't go away until I cut the plants and and now I do I know that I radiate some things but really inside my heart I just feel really calm and happy I've been around you in person and even on camera, I feel like you're bringing me down like in a good way, chill. No, you give beautiful, happy, chill vibes. And I used to be much more anxious as well. And I agree, diet plays a huge part of that. Okay, so Adrian, what does carnivore look like for you these days? A lot of burger patties. I love the Angus, 100% Angus burger patties from Walmart. They are- Yes, me too. They're so good. <laughs> Yeah. And I know that this is going to sound crazy, but I eat a lot of sardines. And if you mix them up, if you make salad out of them with some, some clean mayonnaise and some mustard, it tastes just like tuna salad. Yes. Um, and they're easy on the go. So I always have sardines in my car because I know like if I get hungry on the go, no worries. Um, I eat, I love eggs and I'm, it's a love hate because they, I have a I have a lot of autoimmune stuff I'm still healing and so eggs can kind of sometimes be boggy down. Um so I love steak and my boys love steak. So we cook steak many times a week and bacon. I cook bacon probably every single day. Uh I love pork belly. What else do I eat? I mean I'm I'm a pretty simple person. I'm a lot of beef, eggs, bacon, sardines if I can get my hands on some salmon I'll eat I'll eat that like crazy and shrimp yes I love those are all my favorite things plus I'm on a bit of a chicken thigh kick lately but no <laughs> I so don't know good keep posting those beautiful pictures 
there's some good thighs right there. I've got my favorite seasoning. I'll link to it below. I love that stuff. But all of the foods that you just mentioned are my favorites too. I also, I love sardines. I did not like them at first, but I really do Me now. Either. Do you track either. at all? Has, has tracking food, like using an app, been part of your journey at all? Yes. Yeah. I feel best when I track for two reasons. Number one, I'm probably either incredibly under eating. I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but I think it's because of all the dieting in my life. I feel like when I'm eating, no matter how much it is that I overate. Yes. So when I track, I know, nope, I didn't overeat. I ate just right. I, this is great. And if I see on my tracking that I overate, for a day or two or six, I just go, look at me. I nourished myself. Yes. That's what I think. I think, look at that metabolism day. My metabolism loves that. Tricked you. <laughs> yes. Because if you eat low all the time, your metabolism goes, mm, I'm on to you. I'm going to slow down. I don't like this. So when I see myself eating more, I actually get excited. Yep. I know that sounds ridiculous, but so I love tracking because I love to know where I'm at. I do and too. I do. Really good. And I tell people when you start getting positive results, when you say, oh, I'm sleeping better. Oh, I think my clothes are fitting better. If you have been tracking, you can literally look and see what have I been doing? Where are my macros? Mm -hmm. Around what calories was that working out for me? I, I have learned to love it. I used to be pretty anti-tracking. And I know why people are anti-tracking. Because it was always a, you can't go higher than this. And if you mm -hmm. cross that line, even if you're hungry, you failed for the day. And this is not what tracking is for me. And I agree. The number one reason to track is to make sure you're eating enough. Enough. Yeah. Also, I know if like something that I still struggle with is snacking and eating before bed. And I know if I'm eating before bed and I look at my thing, I go, mm-mm. I only ate 1200 calories today. I'm rebounding instead of being like, I stink. I stink. I stink. I stink. Yeah. Instead it's like, Oh, that's because I didn't eat enough today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And sometimes I'll look and realize, wow, I have eaten a lot today and it can give me a moment to pause and think, am I really hungry right now? Or am I just mm -hmm. snacky because I'm tired I'm bored. There's a show on because I can literally look and say, gosh, I've had 130 grams of protein and 130 grams of fat. That's, that's a lot of food. Why am I snacky? Yeah. You know, and maybe I am hungry, but at that point I can say, well, if you're hungry, eat a plain burger patty, right? Because mm -hmm. you've had enough, but if you want some plain meat, then have it. And so I, I think the data is useful as well. Other things that I've heard you say before, um, if, People are not following you on Instagram. I think they should. You give amazing pep talks and encouragement. I have heard you say that you did not get, even when you switched to Total Carnivore about, is that 13 months ago or so now? Okay. That everything did not just get all better right away. That it wasn't like, ta-da. Could you speak to people about that a little bit? Well, I had all that autoimmune stuff going on and I still do. So I'm going down the SIRS route, the um, chronic inflammatory response syndrome route, because my sleep had gotten better. My body had gotten better. And then all of a sudden it started reversing and I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Yeah. So I went and looked into this. And so I'm doing other types of things to heal, uh, to detox my body. What else wasn't rainbows and ponies? Um, the weight, you know, I really do need to heal my metabolism. I need, you know, f for me, I'm seeing like, maybe I can get some weight off, but then I need to reverse diet for a while and then try it again, maybe. Yeah. And I love watching. I saw your interview with Kathy and how it just, it can take time. And now I really accept that because, you know, on the biggest loser, people were losing, let's say they were losing four pounds a week. They were losing a lot of muscle. Yeah. And I don't want to lose muscle and I don't want to lose bone. And so I'm not, I'm not pushy, pushy, pushing it. Um, I'm enjoying my food. I'm enjoying my exercise and it kind of, if it comes off in a lump, it's cool. And if it doesn't, it's a long life. Yeah. I am going to eat meat for a long time. Cause I feel so much better that I think eventually I will just actually, to be honest, kind of love my body composition right now. 
I love like, that. Yeah. Well, I don't have to weigh 130 pounds. I weigh 150 to 160 and my body composition is getting better every day and I love it. So eating the way you are now, you actually broke that 160 pound barrier that you couldn't get past with The Biggest Loser, with bas- gastric bypass, with the restriction, running half marathons. 160 was always like your wall. Mm-hmm. And, now you, um, and I got here with that? walking. And honestly, I'm not a huge faster. I try to do a little bit of intermittent fasting or to just try to keep it in meals and try to give my digestion a rest. That's a really good thing because all that that hypoglycemia was insulin dysregulation. So if I try to keep it in a window, my insulin is a lot more happy. Um, So, but other than that, I don't do long fasts or anything like that. Um, It's mostly walking and then eating my meals. And I got, I got to my weight. My lowest weight was 154 and I bounce around there. I'm very close to there, bounce in and out of there um, since July. So that's like seven, eight months awesome. of maintaining. A lot better than the five minutes after Biggest Loser. Yes. Oh, you look so good. Of course, I had no idea what you weighed, but I saw you in July And I thought, oh my gosh, looking at you, I had no idea. That was the first time I'd ever met you. I had no idea you had ever had a weight problem. If I'd just met you, you would have no clue. You're just little and beautiful. Look like a picture of health. It it is so hard to believe it. But I've seen your pictures now. I believe you. I believe (laughs) I get it. Okay. A big part of my own recovery from sugar addiction involved avoiding all sweet tastes do you find does is that the case for you as well my life is so much better if I avoid the sweet it's so addicting to me it messes with my hunger cues I find that if I'm eating something sweet whether it's with monk fruit or stevia or whatever that I can eat all day long I'll never feel satiated when I so I could still be eating the meat but have sugar-free jello And I just, I'm not satiated all day. And, and I, so it is so helpful to me in my food addiction and my recovery to cut that. And I keep telling myself just like every addict does, like, maybe I could figure it out. It's never worked for me. (laughs) Right. There are some things in life that I can moderate. I'm sure there are some things you can moderate, but that part of the brain that lights up when the taste of sweet hits my tongue my brain does not know how to moderate that. <laughs> like it's all out the window. And I tried for five straight years. I kept in the sweet taste of sugar-free anything. It was torture, torture to it me. Is. Easier to have no sweet taste than try to moderate that bing in the brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You said that there's a community of people who were on The Biggest Loser, the alumni group. You stay in touch with Do you know if anybody else has tried carnivore? Have they seen what you're doing now? And have they, are they kind of curious at least? Um, There is a growing group of carnivores. And it's so funny because when you join in, you just want to tell everyone. And so us carnivores are like, hey, did you guys know about this? And everybody else who's trying other things, they kind of keep it quiet. But us, we're like, hey, have you heard of this? And and people were like, I healed this, I healed this, I healed this, I finally kept my weight off. And people are shouting it from the rooftops in the community. So I hope more and more and more people just keep coming. I think there's a progression with all these diets and people just keep trying, keep trying and trying. I really think the progression is to come here and that more and more people will come. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that spreading in that community. Because again, you're talking about people who have literally tried everything they're willing to do it and isn't that just the biggest step to say okay well I've tried everything else I'm willing to do it and here you are another thing people say is if I just worked as hard as those people on the biggest loser so I'd like to say you know these are these people who are so hard working they tried so hard they put everything into not being obese anymore and they all gain their weight back too so to me that's a testament that this doesn't work for anyone I mean these people are amazing and hard working and in the public eye and it didn't work for them either so so if you're beating yourself up out there, it's 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 widespread. It doesn't work for anybody, not even the hardest working people with the best tools in the world. And even with Jillian Michaels and Bob. 
<laughs> okay. Right. Okay. I was just watching and she did a commercial on the show to eat your Cheerios. And I was thinking, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> with your skim milk and then run, run, run. And we yeah. wonder, why did why did that not work for me? We've been so misinformed. <laughs> and I mean this I'm just so grateful. I hope lots of people find this. And I think that they will. I do too. You mentioned the SIRS treatment. Are you doing the 12 step shoemaker protocol? How is how is all that going for you? I am doing the shoemaker because my case is pretty bad. Like some of my symptoms were um brain fog that I would almost call dementia. Uh, I was having a difficulty driving. I was having terror and hallucination. Um, every time I ate, I was getting sick. I mean, this is debilitating. So I would say if you have a light case, because I think a lot of people do, I think a lot of people are very inflamed. I would reach out to like Rebecca because she was able to heal it without the shoemaker protocol. But if it's debilitating, I, the, I know a lot of people in this space and that is how they're healing and it's slow and it's hard and it's expensive and it's, it's all those things, but I am getting so much better. I mean, I'm telling you, Kelly, I couldn't have had this conversation with you six months ago. That's and insane. now, now here we are chatting. Yeah, that's right. No, you seem really mentally clear and sharp every day on your stories. You would also never know that you had struggled with that. I have heard people say that there are probably a lot of people in the carnivore space that do struggle or have SIRS. And I think one of the reasons that is true is because plants contain something called amylose. And amylose is a nightmare for people who have SIRS. So there's this genetic component to SIRS where about 25% of the population cannot detox from toxins like mold. And then you have to also be exposed to it, which I feel pretty certain. I know when I was exposed as a kid, and I don't know for sure that I have SIRS, but I used to have a lot of SIRS symptoms. So I've started in every single video that I have shared on YouTube for the past year, I include at the bottom, resources for people who think they may have SIRS because I think I think it's a lot of people and you're right some folks like Rebecca and myself diet change alone getting the amylose out was enough along with things like getting sunshine and those sardines with all the omega-3s so helpful yes. for people with SIRS those things are enough to get us like whew we got relief but when somebody is doing carnivore and say they've been doing it several months and they're not feeling better. I'm like, mm, ah, please get tested, <laughs> please. And so yeah. I'm so glad you're bringing this up. Even this summer, you know, I had been six months into carnivore and I was having a difficulty driving. I was having a difficulty having conversations. My kids would ask me like, what did we do last weekend? And I would be like, I don't know. I, I mean, even this summer it was pretty bad, but it's crazy how with the right you know, we had to find a place that was cleaner and that we could live in, which is the toughest part for sure. But once we did that and continued the medication, it's it's gotten so much better. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise him indeed. And I will, of course, link to some support groups and really good podcasts about SIRS. I think you and I would both agree, start with the diet change. Like there's a really good mm -hmm. chance. And even if you do or don't have SIRS, Get the junk out of the diet, right? Nourish your body, get the toxins out, give yourself real food. But yeah, you might need to take it a step further. And I'm proud of you for doing that. Yeah, I feel so blessed yeah. to have found carnivore because then I found like, you know, when you go certain routes, they're pretty much like, yeah, this can't be healed or sure you have symptoms, but all your blood tests are fine. So who knows? And I feel so blessed to be able to have found this and that I can actually heal. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us, Adrian. And I hope people will follow you on Instagram. I know that you do a great job helping to educate there and then responding to people when they reach out for help. I I can feel your heart your passion for wanting to pull people from where you were. And I love that. So I don't want anybody to feel like I did 
And I know so many people do, which is blaming and guilt and like, I'm stuck and I'm, you know, I want you to be relieved of that because we all deserve to be nourished and to heal and to feel our best. And so if we can just find one person that will come and get nourished and healed, come on in and then come to our meetups and join the community. The community is probably top favorite part is getting to know all the people and us all working together to reach our goals, to push each other, to, to feel better, to feel healthier. And, and that honestly has been part of the, you know, when I left the biggest loser, there was no healing in between here Mm -hmm. and being part of the community has helped me heal between here. When I say things, certain things, somebody will call me out on it and say, do you realize that you just talked down about yourself? Do you realize that you just did this and that we love you and you should love you and you shouldn't talk to yourself like that. And so I just, I love the community too. Yeah, me too. Oh, we really are blessed. Thank you again, Adrian. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Bye.